Hi YouTube, welcome to another edition of Horror Hands and for this video we're going to be going through 10 cheap and tacky monster movies that actually were pretty awesome because on this channel being described as cheap and tacky is not necessarily a bad thing let's get straight into it first up from the magical year of 1957 we have Attack of the Crab Monsters Roger Corman's really fun monster movie from the 1950s. In this one, we see a scientific expedition. They're going down to some coral reef in the Pacific and they are attacked by said crab monsters. And that's pretty much the story in this movie. You're going to see that as a common theme in this video. Uh, there's not going to be a great deal of, uh, of articulatory explanation of the plot. It's basically a group of people in some kind of place and they're attacked by these cheesy looking monsters, which for me is all I need to be entertained. But I've always loved the crab monsters in, in this movie. I love any kind of monster that comes from the sea and they look pretty awesome. And when you see them with their legs out and, and, and making their way towards some uh, unsuspecting victim, they do kind of look pretty impressive, if not a little bit cheesy. And I've always loved how the crab monsters kind of look like they were half asleep. They've always got kind of their eyes half closed, uh, as if they're uh, as if they're like just come out of a deep sleep, which <laughs> always made me smile. But kind of makes them a little bit more creepy, and makes me think how dangerous would they be if they were fully awake. But Attack of the Crab Monsters was one of the many cheap horror films that Roger Corman made around this time we did it for seventy thousand dollars and uh, they uh, they had uh, so little time to do it in fact one of the actors actually broke his toe uh, whilst diving in the in the ocean and they quickly bandaged it up and roger common was like go again uh, let's keep doing this scene because they just didn't have the time or the money to deal with it properly so yeah if you want a, a really uh, a fun albeit cheap and cheerful monster movie from the 50s Attack of the Crab Monsters has got a lot going for it and it's uh, one that I've always enjoyed over the years. Next up we have The Brain from 1988. One of the most fun, cheesy, rubber puppet monster movies from the 80s that you will see. In this one, this high school student, he gets sent to like this psychological laboratory. They're doing like tests on mind control and things like that but they have this giant brain creature in the center of it all which is sort of enabling this work to go on and of course it breaks out and just starts going up and down the laboratory corridors literally eating people chomping down on people swallowing them you see the legs flailing away in its mouth and it just looks awesome it's this giant slimy rubber looking brain monster uh, that's almost too big for the corridors in some scenes and I like it because when the action starts to happen they just unapologetically throw this brain creature out there it's it's moving all around the place it's lunging at the camera and its victims and it just looks really cool so as I say if you want a really fun cheesy 80s monster movie the brain is definitely worth checking out Next up, we have Creepozoids from 1987. Now, there were a number of alien ripoffs once that movie came out. That's almost a subgenre of itself. Some of them are absolutely terrible. Some lean towards the more entertaining part of the scale. This one is the latter. This is one of the best of the shameless alien ripoffs, in my opinion, Creepozoids. Uh, this is a bunch of people on this like research spaceship, but they are... There's an alien on board, there's a fanged monster that goes about killing them off one by one. And it's pretty low brow, but it's got a really cool creature in it. It's got some good gore in it, and it's got this really weird like baby monster towards the end. This one is just one of those, take your brain out and enjoy it. Really low budget, it was shot in 15 days, which is just crazy to think about. Um, but as I say, if you are, if you do like your your lowbrow, shameless alien ripoffs, Creepozoids is definitely a must-watch. There was a sequel planned for it, but unfortunately, it never happened. But thankfully, we do have the first one uh, to watch and enjoy. 
Next up, we have the excellent Deep Space from 1988. And this is another kind of alien ripoff, but it takes place in the city. This alien crashes down in like a meteor, lands in the middle of the city and goes around killing people off. So you've got the alien ripoff aspect of it with a xenomorph style looking monster, but they really do well to utilize the 1980s city setting. This almost plays out like an episode of Miami Vice. You've got Bo Fenson and Charles Napier going after the alien, but then you've got the cool creature aspects as well, and it just works really well. It's a really fun film. And then there's a bit at the end where a guy fights the alien with a chainsaw, which is as awesome as it sounds. Uh, this is a Fred Olin Ray film, which if I see that name to a movie, I'm always going to check it out. Interestingly, this was his biggest budget movie to date at $2 million. Uh, this, is, uh, this was the one he had most money to play around with. And in my opinion, it's one of his best. So yeah, great looking creature and an awesome city setting. Make Deep Space a very fun watch. Next up, we go back to 1957 with The Giant Claw, which does feature one of the most silliest monsters you will see in cinema. This one is about the US Air Force and they pick up uh, an extraterrestrial signal and at first they can't find it, they think like it's a mistake or something that this guy's incorrect but then it turns out it's uh, they're under attack from this extraterrestrial prehistoric giant flying bird which just proceeds to go around and destroy everything, all the buildings in sight. And the giant claw is a fun one because it's actually presented as quite like a very serious affair. It's narrated with this very stern kind of military uh, narration. So very much like at 1600 hours, the US Air Force decided to plan an attack that centered around this and very, very stern voice. Yet the monster in question is just this really goofy looking uh, big bird monster obviously being operated as a puppet you can see the strings you can basically see someone moving it up and down it's got these sort of beady goggly eyes uh, but at the same time it is pretty awesome it's still a giant flying monster uh, which, which i think is is quite cool so an interesting mix of this very serious narration and just one of the silliest monster movies that you'll see but it's a joy to watch and and very entertaining and it is said that the actors that starred in this movie never actually saw the creature whilst they were making the film. It wasn't until opening night when they all went to the cinema to watch it and the audience actually started laughing when they saw the creature on screen. And it's said that a number of the cast members slunk out in embarrassment, which is a shame because there is a lot of fun to be had in the giant claw. And as I say, if you want to see one of the silliest but kind of coolest monster movies, uh, that there is, this is the film for you. Next up we have Godzilla vs the Sea Monster, aka Ebira, Horror of the Deep. So a great Godzilla movie from 1966. This one sees this guy looking for his brother and he finds him on this island uh, which is being controlled by this terrorist group and they're, they're making something, doing something nefarious, which is bad enough. But there's also a giant mutant lobster that lurks just offshore so no one can escape the island. And of course Godzilla he inevitably has to fight Ebira, the giant lobster monster, and it's really really cool. It makes for some of the most the best monster fighting scenes that you'll see in the Godzilla series. As I said before, I love any kind of aquatic monster, and Ebira is right at the top of the list as one of the most awesome looking sea monsters you'll see. I love that the, somebody thought to use a giant lobster in the first place, that's pretty cool. Uh, and everywhere looks really impressive. Uh, yeah, it does look very kind of rubbery and uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to make a giant lobster look realistic, but they do a pretty good job. And he has a, some really cool moments with Godzilla. They throw rocks at each other, things like that. He attacks some of the boats. I think it's pretty cool. And this was directed by um, John Fukudu, who did a number of Godzilla films, but unfortunately hates all of them. 
He did not like working on the films. Him and Toho had very different ideas of what the movie should be. And unfortunately, things didn't go his way. And he, he very much hates the movies that he made for Toho, which is really unfortunate. I did hear that uh, he has gone on record to say he's received a number of fan mail about movies like Everywhere, and he was surprised how many people like it. So maybe that sways his his uh, his thoughts on these movies. But yeah, unfortunately, it's a source of embarrassment for, for more people that were involved in it. But Everywhere Horror of the Deep, it was a staple Godzilla film from my childhood. I never had that many as a kid. It was sort of four or five that I could find on video and that was it. But everyone was one. And man, those scenes of Godzilla fighting him, I, I watched over and over again. So yeah, this will always be one of my favorite Godzilla movies. Next up we have Insect, AKA Blue Monkey from 1987. Never liked the title Blue Monkey. Insect is a much more apt name for this one. Now this takes place in a hospital and they come across some kind of organism which is quickly spreading so they have to lock down the hospital and quarantine everything uh, but in the meantime this kind of uh, uh, organism's gotten away and over time has grown into this giant praying mantis like monster which is stalking the hospital corridors and Steve Railsback and a few other people have to deal with it and again, it's one of those movies where that's kind of it. That's your plot. It's just this cool looking monster, really kind of slimy and loads of legs flailing about and just eating and killing off a bunch of the cast members. I love this one. This one is another great take your brain out monster movie. I love the shots of the monster moving around the corridors and up and down the, the staircases and things. Again, you can almost see the people operating operating the creature and you can see the puppetry and the animatronics but one of the reasons why I like it it's a really fun film having said that this is another movie that is a source of embarrassment for its stars Steve Railsback has uh, on record said that this movie was uh, was one that he was not keen on and was not proud of which is unfortunate these actors really need to reevaluate how they think of these movies because they were so cool and yeah Insect yeah, one of the best 80s monster films that, that I've seen. Next up, we have Metamorphosis, The Alien Factor from 1990. A really awesome movie set in this kind of like security, like laboratory. Uh, it's housing this really gnarly, snarling, gooey looking monster, which of course breaks out and goes around killing people. Same old story. Uh, but this one is really awesome. This was originally conceived as a sequel to The Deadly Spawn, but it never quite worked out. I don't know if they got the rights or to it, something like that. So this one has always been considered an uh, indirect sequel to that movie. And you can kind of tell it's different in some places, especially in terms of the setting and the laboratory and that kind of thing. But in terms of the monster, it looks very different to The Deadly Spawn, but I can imagine it being like sort of in the same family as that creature maybe like its cousin or something like that but uh, the monster in this one is awesome it's got loads and loads of sharp teeth it's really gooey uh, and um, rubbery looking and it um, it gets a lot of screen time which is really good the cover of the dvd would kind of make you think that this is sort of like a weird science fiction movie but no this is very much an in your face b movie monster movie and I love how much screen time the creature gets in this. I, when it gets going, they just go for it. And the monster is there in your face, eating people and causing lots of chaos. So, yeah, if you want to see the unofficial sequel to The Deadly Spawn, Metamorphosis, definitely worth checking out. Next up from 1963, we have The Slime People. This one takes place in uh, Los Angeles where this weird fog comes down, kind of traps people in the area, and then these slime people monsters come out from the Earth's surface and start attacking people, and and that's about it, really. I mean, what else do you want from a film called The Slime People? But this one is awesome. It's great sort of men in suit monsters. They spend most of the time kind of just wandering around, to be honest, but they do grab a few people and cause a bit of trouble, and it's always just really fun when you see them on screen. 
Obviously, it's people in rubber suits. You can kind of see the creases in the costumes and things like that. It's pretty low budget, um, but it is, um, it's a lot of fun. Again, it's very low budget. The scenes in this movie of the devastation supposedly caused by the slime people is actually footage from a real-life wildfire that happened in that area. And uh, the people that played the slime people claim they never got paid for it. So, again, more uh, more low-budget filmmaking right there. But, again, if you want to see a really cool 60s monster movie that feels like it's 50s, check out the slime people. Don't expect too much, but they do look pretty cool when they're either wandering around or attacking people. And finally, we end with what has to be the cheapest and tackiest movie on this list. Weasels Rip My Flesh from 1979. Made by Nathan Shift for virtually no money. He shot this around his hometown with his family and friends. This one, to say it's virtually no budget, it actually starts in space. There's a very, very cheap looking spaceship and some model sets and things. The spaceship uh, is... is Potting around in space, going to Venus or something, and somehow some radioactivity affects the local creatures in this town, namely the weasels that um, grow giant and mutated and go around killing people. Uh, so, as I say, very low budget. A lot of people will have a hard time with weasels with my flesh because it's so cheap, but it's worth watching for the weasel attacks. Uh, this kind of giant weasel monster. These are the best pictures I can find of it. But it's literally like some carpeted looking thing. Uh, stitched together, hacked together. Bits of plastic on it. Fake looking teeth. I mean, it's falling apart as the scene's playing out. But there's something charming about Weasel's Rip My Flesh. Like, it's a terrible film. They had no money. But they did their best. And there's still a giant weasel monster attacking someone. Which... It's pretty cool. You don't see that every day. So if you want really low-budget, tacky, monster movie filmmaking, Weasels with My Flesh may be the movie for you. But don't expect anything else from this one. So there you go, guys. That was 10 cheap and tacky mon movie monsters uh, that I thought were awesome. Let me know what you think about that list. Let me know if there's any more out there that you like. I'd love to know what your, uh, what your favourite movie monsters are. So let me know. So thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more videos.